Thank you for joining me tonight. I am Layla Cartier, the Executive Director of Craft Now Philadelphia. This is our fourth installment of the virtual series Capital Now, which is focused on capital readiness to provide creative business people with a working understand of three forms of funding. We started with grants, crowdfunding, and tonight we're focusing on financing. Uh, and we also want to provide access to business readiness to help secure those investments and put them to good use. Uh, this, pro this is part of a new project we're working on with our friends in Pittsburgh, thanks to our partnership with the Creative Business Accelerator and newly formed Keystone Alliance for Creative Entrepreneurs. Uh, just a little bit of housekeeping, I have enabled the closed caption feature tonight, so you can click on the CC button at the bottom of your screen for auto transcription. And we ask that everyone stays on mute uh, to avoid background noise, uh, but you can put questions in the chat and we'll also invite you to unmute yourself uh, later in the program. So we're here to learn about two important acronyms when it comes to being a creative business person, CDFI and SBDC. Community Development Financial Institutions, also known as CDFIs, and Small Business Development Centers, SBDCs, serve as strong allies to creative businesses looking to make big moves. As nonprofit investors focused on social impact, CDFIs offer creative businesses uh, the flexibility needed to get funding for increasingly complex projects and SBDCs offer no-cost consulting services to help entrepreneurs with growth planning like legal form formation, business plan writing, and loan prep. Uh, joining me tonight are Nathan McCann, Joanna Montes from the Community First Fund, Katie Johnson from the Creative Business Accelerator at Bridgeway, and Erica Tap Duran at Temple University Small Business Development Center. Uh, talking with us first is going to be Nathan McCann, and I'm going to let him introduce Joanna. Nathan has 20 plus years of experience in banking, lending, community development, government banking, relationship management, and leadership. He has an aptitude for evaluating financial situations involving credit and matching the right program to minimize risk for both the business and the client. He currently works for uh, the CDFI Community First Fund, which is dedicated to helping distressed neighborhoods with revitalization and economic growth. Uh, Nathan, thank you for being here tonight. I'm looking forward to learning about the loan programs you have targeting creative businesses. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to him and open his PowerPoint. Thank you, Layla. So Community First Fund is a CDFI. Uh, we're located, um, our headquarters is located in Lancaster, PA. Um, we cover 25 counties in southeastern Pennsylvania, the county of Camden County, and Delaware. Community First, and we also have an office in Philadelphia. So could you go to page one, Layla? Pardon me for starting at the end. <laughs> page two, thank you. So this is page one, page two. Go back one, okay. So we were founded in 1992, um, we have provided 345 million in financing and nearly 5,300 small business loans to businesses and nonprofits. Um, we expanded our counties. Um, when we did this, it was 20 counties. We're in 25 counties. Um, we have recently merged um, with a small CDFI in Philadelphia called Financia. Um, we have now become Community First Fund, um, which is really rare in the CDFI world for CDFIs to merge. So it, was a, it doubled our size and it doubled our capacity. Okay, uh, next slide. Okay, so we have two main 
programs that we run at Community First Fund. <clears throat> one is the Infinity Group Lending and one is traditional lending. Infinity Group Lending, I will let <clears throat> the manager of Infinity Group Lending, I will let her speak. Her name is Joanne Montas. And she will tell you all about Infinity Group Lending. Then I'll follow up with traditional lending. Good evening, everyone. My name is Joanna Montas and I am the Affinity Group Lending Manager. I'm just gonna give you a quick background of what the Affinity Group Lending Program is. We also call it AGL. So you will hear me um, refer to it as the AGL pro program. So the Affinity Group Lending Program is a lending circle loan where we provide products and single loans to groups of entrepreneurs and consumer for them to just divide among themselves. Um, the loans in the, in the program range from $1,200 to $20,000 based on the number of 12 month lending cycles completed. Each participant do sign a group guarantee, meaning that the group is responsible for one another. If there are any mispayments, then you know, the group will be responsible to take care of these mispayments. The AGL leverages the existing relationship of the affinity group. So most of the individuals that do come to our program they already have a connection. They already have an, a relationship. And what we do is we strengthen that relationship with, the, um, with this program and the loans that is provided to them. Um, the AGL members do participate in financial workshops about business growth, development, home ownership, and more. What are the benefits of the AGL program? Credit building, a great beginner loan for business owners or consumers with little credit or bad credit. The loan payments, they do build your um, credit proactively. So even if you have bad credit, we will work with you to get, you know, to get your credit up to par so that you can qualify later on for traditional lending loans. We provide financial coaching where we can even, we'll help establish a financial plan to support um, the person's financial goal or the, or the business financial goal. Business training, so throughout the 12 month cycle, you will attend workshops on how to strengthen and grow your business. Project management support, work with project managers to accomplish small or large projects for your business and personal and business asset growth. As you gain access to a larger amount of capital, you can build your asset base. This helps in short term and long term increase financial stability. And we also help develop the professional community. So you will meet and learn from other entrepreneurs and different networking events that the program does provide. So in order to be eligible or you know, to, to meet the criteria of the AGL program, groups must be predetermined before applying. Community leader, free screen group and makes referral and may be a member of the group if applicable. All group members fill out an individual application and they must apply tax returns, bank statements, commercial activity license, and other documents as needed. Nathan? Okay, Layla, can you advance one more? Next page. I think uh, Joanne went through all this. Okay, small business lending. Small business lending is a little bit different um, from AGL lending. Small business lending, we are lending to individual businesses. Um, we do micro loans. Um, we do uh, startup business loans and expansion loans. Um, it could be a loan from ten to $5,000 to um, $3 million. Um, In your world, um, a lot of the businesses may be startups or may be sole proprietors. Uh, we would work with the sole proprietors and startups uh, to help them. We don't actually develop the business plan for them, um, but we do go through, we will review the business plan with them to make sure um, all aspects of the business plan will lead up to success of doing the loan. Uh, we do loans for machinery, equipment, purchases, site improvements, working capital, inventory, materials, supplies, 
and expansion and also um, real estate purchases. Can you advance the advance the PowerPoint? Okay. So in traditional lending, it will give you access to capital, startup capital. We all what we do different from what a traditional bank would do is we provide technical assistance before the loan and after the loan. Um, we counsel the business all through the business cycle and the, we counsel the business. Um, and these services are free um, from the banker. Um, so you would basically have a personal banker that you actually can consult with about your business. Uh, we also provide patient capital. Um, patient capital sometimes is really tough to get. So the borrower, you know, in our industry, when we're saying patient capital, we mean we are being patient that the business will soon project to be profitable. So going for patient capital, what's important there is that you have and you're forecasting um, for your business to be profitable in the future um, by using projections. And I always, um, we do post uh, technical assistance as well. Um, we also would um, refer your business to other um, technical assistance uh, providers or if you are in need of a lawyer or an accountant, we would advise you um, on those aspects of your business as well. Okay, Leo, you can advance it. Okay, so the five, when a small business owner, when you go in front of a banker, these are the five things that you should consider consider before you go um, in front of a banker to um, talk with the banker about a loan. And we say it's, it's the pillars of credit. It's the five C's of credit, your capacity to pay the loan back, your collateral, um, what type of collateral can you offer for the loan, your character. Your character is based off your credit history. Um, your character can also be um, connected to the industry in which you are in. Do you have a lot of experience in that industry? Or I can give you an example. Um, you are a restaurant worker, but now you wanna open up an engineering firm. So a bank would look at it like, well, you know, do you have an experience in being um, an engineer? No. So your character, um, the loan has to make sense. If it doesn't make sense, um, we pretty much will you know, talk to you about what does make sense. Um, your credit, your credit score, you should always know what your credit score is. If you don't know what your credit score is, you can um, get a free credit report each year. Um, and then capital. So uh, about capital, um, I always tell small business owners, okay, this is what you want to do. Um, this is your idea, especially startup businesses. Um, and if this is your idea, um, you have to put money into your own business as equity. So you have to have some type of capital um, which basically means save your save savings. Um, and so we could talk about that. Um, sometimes capital is an issue with small startup small businesses. Um, sometimes they don't have the capital to start up, say, well, that's why I'm coming to a bank for the capital. But um, we are still looking at what do you have to offer? Um, to put into the business. Sometimes you have already put money into the business, 
So my advice would be whatever money you are putting into your business to start it up, you should keep a money trail because that's equity that you're putting into your business. Okay, thank you. I think that's the last one. So I asked everybody to hold questions until um, the end, until the Small Business Center and um, Bridgeway makes their uh, presentations. Thank you, Nathan. I'm sorry I messed up the slides in the beginning. What I can do is um, share that with all the registrants as a PDF so they have all the details that uh, Joanna covered and what you covered as well. Thank you. Uh, let me exit out of this and then introduce my friend uh, Katie with the uh, Creative Business Accelerator, Katie Johnson, who has an extensive background in ceramics, business, and nonprofits, is now, what is your new role? Well, it's funny. So I'm technically the associate director, but there is also no director. We just haven't, I just haven't changed my card. So yeah, whatever, director of the CBA. That works. Uh, congratulations Thank on you. <laughs> being director of the Creative Business Accelerator in uh, Pittsburgh. She was formerly director of Braddock Tiles, a social enterprise that produced small batch ar architectural tiles with youth uh, to teach job readiness. And now she provides artists and designers with technical assistance, funding options and opportunities to grow their business. And she is here tonight to share some examples about using um, CDFIs and loans, as well as SBDCs and technical assistance to um, prepare yourself for the next step in your creative business. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you for that introduction. Um, hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Um, so the role that I'm really playing um, in this conversation tonight is to represent uh, the intermediary, really, between makers and capital. Um, like Nathan, I'm, uh, I also work at a CDFI, Bridgeway Capital. Uh, we are based in Pittsburgh. Um, we have a footprint of 13 counties, um, but Philadelphia does not fall within our footprint. Um, and, uh, but like other CDFIs, we're mission-based. Uh, we uh, lend to small businesses that are founded by um, uh, minority-owned businesses, uh, those located in low to moderate income areas, uh, veteran-owned businesses, um, so on and, and so forth. We have a, a list of criteria. And um, the, the CBA, the um, Creative Business Accelerator is a program of Bridgeway Capital. And so it is a one initiative out of many that is focusing on artists, makers, and designers, all of these um, great uh, people in our community that are actively contributing to economic development in our region. So our focus is to help um, artists and designers, just like yourself, all the people that are joining us tonight, to help make sure that you can turn your passion into a profession and create a really resilient business for yourself that has longevity and stability. And so we do that um, in a bunch of different ways. We provide technical assistance, just like other um, CDFIs. And so the, that's really the nuts and bolts, like the legal help, um, marketing assistance, uh, uh, helping you understand your financials, sort of all of those pieces that are really the building blocks of any business. And we work um, with other organizations in our ecosystem to do that as well. Um, so that would be um, local small business development centers, um, other CDFIs, uh, and then also just consultants and, and other people that have small businesses in our area that are experts, that are content experts um, in small business needs. So we do that. We also um, create access to markets for makers. So that's a really big part of our program because really you don't have a business um, unless you're selling things. That's like one of the defining factors. And we know that for a biz business to be resilient, you not only need access to markets, but you also um, need to 
keep moving that ladder up into bigger and bigger market opportunities so that you can grow. So we help people navigate that. And then the capital side of things, which is why we're here tonight, is also a piece of it. We, all, we um, lend to small businesses and we try to do that in a way that is um, in conversation with access to markets, with technical assistance, and also with peers. We have um, created a peer network where businesses have come together. They've had been in conversation. They've realized that they want to start a studio storefront together. And we've helped facilitate everybody working together to then access capital in order to um, expand their businesses that way and to sort of create an enterpri enterprise together. So there's like so many pathways. And that's really the thing that I want to be here tonight is to talk about the fact that there are many, many different reasons why people access capital and that artists and makers are really a part of an ecosystem. And we're here to help you both access capital, but also a bunch of other resources. Well, whether it's other makers, um, like through Craft Now and their programming to connect to other people who are making things, connect to SBDCs who are also represented here tonight, which we'll hear from in a minute, and connect to CDFIs and other organizations that are putting capital out into the ecosystem to help make sure that your business is growing um, and that you see yourself as a business because many artists and makers don't. And that word, capital, business, that can feel really uncomfortable and it feels like, well, that's not me because I'm a painter. And I make paintings and I'm represented by a gallery and I have patrons and it's not a business. It's a creative practice. Well, it's actually both. It is a creative practice and it is also a business. And it's a business that we want to see sustain itself. And that's really why we're here tonight. So I'm going to throw a couple examples up. Um, I think I can share my screen. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, very easy. There we go. So I'm just going to briefly uh, share. There we go. And then slideshow from beginning. Great. And then let's see here. So um, just some high level, a uh, uh, high level view of some of the work that we've done at the CBA. Um, so to date from uh, the, our fiscal year 16 to fiscal year 21. So this is over the last five years that we've been around the CBA. Bridgeway Capital has been around for 30 years. Um, we have invested over $5 million into uh, artists, makers, and designers in our region. And that's been um, a little over four and a half million dollars uh, in loans themselves. And then we've done um, a little shy of a million dollars in grants and then about $50,000 in services. Um, but I just a, a note that um, a large chunk of those grants came from our facilitation of the PA small business grants for COVID-19. That was a statewide initiative. And then we only started tracking our services last year. So the service number is probably really a lot higher. And when I refer to services, I'm talking about all the things that I mentioned earlier. That's us um, paying for somebody to go to a lawyer to make themselves an LLC, to get an LLC to incorporate or marketing services or other like really catalytic things that have helped people then uh, move their business in the direction that they were trying to go in. Um, so one of the businesses that we have supported is the Woven Kente. Um, the uh, founder, but this is Baina Brookins. So um, with the Woven Kente, we um, did two micro loans. These are SBA micro loans for under $5,000 for brand development, inventory building, and pursuing market opportunities. And I wanted to highlight um, Baina because um, many people think that if you get a loan, it needs to be for this huge amount of money, like, you know, $50,000 or $100,000. That's not the case at all. There, um, as Nathan was pointing out, um, micro loans are a, a big part of what CDFIs do, and they're really great because they can relieve the bottleneck that, that you might be experiencing to maybe get a website up and going or to get it improved, to market, to do all these things that will help you gain exposure and um, gain traction. Is let's say you're a fine artist and you um, you really want to reach a national market, but you need to pay a marketer or like a, an expert to do that. But then your income will come in. That's a bottleneck. And microloans are a 
really great way for you to work with a CDFI to get over that hurdle. And that's exactly what Bayina did. Commonwealth Press is a totally different story. This is a really large business that's um, located here in Pittsburgh. And we did a we did a nearly um, $500,000 loan for them to purchase and renovate a building in a low to moderate income area. And so uh, Commonwealth Press has many employees and um, they were experiencing many of the changes that um, I think that people on this call have experienced also in Philadelphia where they were operating their business out of buildings and the rent kept going up and they kept having to move and they have a large operation and that is extremely disruptive and it's also destabilizing for a business. Um, and this can be for a larger business or again, a fine artist or um, a, a person that identifies with a craft like ceramics. That issue is still the same, is that you know when a community is changing and rents are going up, you end up being displaced and um, one strategy to stabilize your business and not have to go anywhere is to purchase a building. And it's also equity back into your community and back into your business. This is a great conversation to have with a CDFI because it's also on our mission too. We want people to buy buildings in um, target areas because that creates strong and resilient communities. We don't wanna see buildings sitting empty. And so um, we had that conversation with Commonwealth Press and they ended up buying a building and it's been a huge success for them. They're still operating out of that building today. And then lastly, KMJ Metalworks. Um, with KMJ, we did a little over a $10,000 loan for him to increase, excuse me, increase production capacity um, to work with a regional manufacturer. So this is an example of an artist and a designer who um, came up with these really beautiful, it's actually metal wall art. And he was doing everything by hand and it was really labor intensive. He didn't have the time to really do everything, but he didn't want to hire um, just another individual to manufacture these things in a studio because he didn't want to share a studio with another person. And he didn't really trust them to have the same level of precision that he has. So he ended up meeting with a local manufacturer that could um, do laser cutting and other uh, like enameling and some other things that he was doing. Um, and it actually made his products a little bit cheaper and um, the quality was really high, but he, um, in order to do that, um, he needed a loan to build that capacity. Um, he needed to purchase materials. He needed to develop prototypes with the manufacturer to figure out the system. And so we had that conversation and he ended up getting a $10,000 loan. Um, and his products now, they've ended up in um, real estate developments. Uh, they were purchased by a local hotel and he could not have actually said yes to those opportunities if he hadn't figured out this manufacturing partnership. So some common themes that we have in conversations with artists, designers, and makers are, you know, the, the who are you? So do you um, possess organized and updated organizational documents? And what I mean by that is, um, do you, are you incorporated under an LLC? Do you have um, agreements for your business? Let's say you have a partnership agreement if you're sharing your business with another person. Like what are the documents that sort of prove that you have a business? And are, are they organized and up to date? What's the money for? Um, so what is the clarity on the sources and uses of the loan. And that could be, you know, again, for capacity building to purchase equipment, we'll wanna know that. Um, and how will you pay it back? So this is um, one of those moments where um, bookkeeping is really helpful. So um, if you have a uh, bookkeeping software that is tracking your sales, that's really great. That shows historical data. We're gonna be asking about that. The credit, which Nathan was pointing to earlier, um, is another thing that we'll be looking at and have a conversation with. Again, CDFIs, um, we're nonprofits. We're really here to have conversations about credit and educate you and help you improve your credit if needed. Um, we're, we're not a bank. The, the, the tone of the conversation is going to be different, um, but it is something that will be looked at. And then what's the big picture? So do you have a business plan if you don't? Um, we can help you get one, um, partner with an SBDC or somebody else. And then of course, we'll, we will look at the risk um, because it is a loan, but CDFIs um, 
are made really to help um, people who cannot get a traditional loan because they are too high risk. That's one of the functions that we play in the capital ecosystem. And so um, our goal is to remove barriers for access to capital for people who traditionally have not had access to it before. And many of those people are in creative industries. So we're here to educate and then to remove barriers. Um, so preparing, you're going to want to build a business plan. And how do you do that? Um, you'll work with a local SBDC for one on one consulting. There's a bunch of great free workshops that are offered. I highly recommend you do some Googling, um, set up some meetings with um, uh, Temple, the Temple SBDC, who is going to speak after me um, about the different opportunities that are in your area. I also would really recommend this online resource called Live Plan. It's a cloud-based um, business planning resource that uh, has amazing uh, information sort of embedded in it. And then you get to work on a business plan in real time and then save it to the cloud. But it already has a bunch of really great features inside of it, like the calculations for projections for your income and all these things. So you're not just like staring at a blank piece of paper, which is, just, it can be so hard, you know, and this actually gives you something to sort of work with. Um, so just Google live plan business planning and it'll all pop up. Um, and then I really wanted to point out um, an opportunity that is um, out there right now to sort of get things going. So maybe a business plan feels like it's too far off, um, too much work. There's an opportunity right now called the Creative Entrepreneurship Accelerator Grant. Um, it is available statewide. It's by the PA Arts Council, and um, it is for two thousand dollars. And you, um, what you'll do is find a um, referral partner in your area. And I know, and I'll let uh, Layla um, talk about this, but I know that there's a presentation in December about this opportunity coming up. But you don't need a full-on business plan. You really need a business plan outline and to answer some key questions that are in the application. It's not very difficult. It's a great way to get this process started and then get a little bit of money going while you're working on maybe a larger plan. Um, and then with that, we'll stop sharing. Um, and then I'll, uh, I'll let Layla go ahead and talk about the CEA um, grant. And I'm a referral partner as well. I've been already fielding questions, so I can also help with that if there's questions about that. Thank you, Katie. Yes, on December 7th, we're going to be working with um, the GPCA here in Philadelphia and um, the Greater Philadelphia Cultural Alliance and um, the Enterprise Center, who's a referral partner, and they're going to be presenting just like we are here tonight on the $2,000 grant opportunity available through um, the PA Council on the Arts. Um, and I'm going to put more. Roberta had a question about dropping a link in the chat, which I will do. Um, maybe it's about the CEA grants. I'll, I'll grab it and put it in the chat. Um, but first, I'm going to introduce our last presenter, um, Erica. Erica is here with us from Temple University's um, Small Business Development Center. She provides consulting services to pre-venture and startup businesses, as well as teaching the center's business planning courses. Erica is also part of the faculty of the Social Enterprise Program at the Villanova School of Business, working with teams of students, providing pro bono consulting for social enterprises. She came to Temple with a decade of experience in community and economic development in Philadelphia, and she has served in leadership roles at several community-based organizations, such as South Kensington Community Partners, Lutheran Settlement House, Finata, and Achievability. So Erica is going to be running her presentation. Okay, thank you, Layla. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pull my slides up and then we can start cooking with fire. So give me one second here. Okay, <clears throat> we know where we are. <laughs> this is me. 
Thank you, Layla, for the introduction. So what I'm gonna do in the next uh, few minutes here, I'm gonna share some information about the Temple SBDC, um, which will pretty much translate to um, all of the small business development centers in Pennsylvania, including the ones serving the Pittsburgh area. Um, I'm gonna give you uh, like the, the highlights of how you get ready to go talk to Katie or Nathan. Um, high level, what goes into a business plan, and then these three pieces that I think are so important um, that are right at the core. When we get those figured out, everything else falls into place. So the Temple Small Business Development Center, um, we are a program of the Small Business, uh, Small Business Administration, the SBA. Um, so they fund us, the uh, state of Pennsylvania funds us, and Temple University funds us and hosts us, um, which is all to share with you that is why our services are free of charge to uh, our clients. Um, really, at the end of the day, our goal is to help businesses start, grow, and thrive. Um, we've been around since 1983. Um, we serve Philadelphia, Eastern Montgomery, and Lower Bucks County. Um, every small business development, or development center serves a different geographic area. So depending on where you are, um, you may be working with a different SBDC. Um, and I think most of our um, folks tonight are from Pittsburgh uh, and Philadelphia. So uh, what do we do? Um, two main areas, the first of which is uh, individual consulting. Um, how does it work? Um, you sign up <laughs> on our website. Um, uh, you'll then be prompted to schedule an intake call, um, which will be an opportunity to hear uh, about your business, what kind of help you're looking for, and for us to share uh, the kinds of resources um, that we can provide you. And um, those meetings are always scheduled on your, on your schedule as well as the consultants. Some of the things we can help you with are this, you know, here's the laundry list. Uh, you know, as Layla mentioned, I work with early stage companies. So I um, and my colleagues who work with early stage companies spend a lot of time on business planning, uh, legal formation, some extent, you know, all of these other things are part of your business plan or can be part of your business plan. Um, depending Um, colleagues, again, who do early stage companies, but we also have, you know, a deep bench of consultants with all types of expertise and have worked with businesses, you know, really at every imaginable, every imaginable scale. Um, next, we have our, you know, resources and training. So we have a huge number um, daily, uh, different types of trainings that are going on all free of charge um, for the clients. Um, Hopefully, you're going to be directed to our website um, after this presentation, so you can kind of see the, the huge number of things that we have going on. Um, we definitely have all sorts of resources to share, and that can be something that's done, you know, through an intake call, through working with your consultant, um, or just sending an email to the center and, and us figuring out what you need. Um, we have clinics. So the two big ones we have are a legal clinic. And, that's in partnership with the, the, um, the law school at Temple, as well as uh, creative clinics. So that is, we have um, a very small staff who can do branding packages for our clients. Um, our three big training programs are the business planning class, which I teach. We have a construction management certificate program. That's actually a nine month program for people in the building trades who are looking to start their own business. Um, and then you can see we have the legal and branding clinics. So what are the steps to prepare for financing? Um, first is always gonna be the business plan. Now I understand that some of you may be coming from a space that you're a really small enterprise as Katie was talking about, like, it's just me, I make things, people buy them. Um, that is a business. <laughs> and there is a, a great, you know, a plan is a great way to commit that to paper. We find that's a useful exercise regardless of where people are um, and regardless if they're looking for financing or not. Um, you have to put your financial projections and budgets together. Um, both of these things we can help with. Um, as uh, Nathan mentioned, you're going to have to put some skin in the game, whether it's something 
that you will be doing or has recently happened. Um, so making sure you have your money together and credit improvement. There's no such thing as credit that's too good. So wherever you are, keep working on it. Um, then you figure out who the lender is you wanna work with. Um, almost all the lenders we've ever worked with are happy to look at a plan and give some preliminary feedback about whether this is something viable. If it's not, then here's some things we could do or go back to the SBDC and, and rethink. And then is the part where you actually submit the application. So business planning, it's the planning, not the plan that helps you. Um, and it really, it's all about forcing you to look at all of the aspects of the business and ask yourself the tough questions. We love making mistakes on paper because that's a really uh, inexpensive way to learn a lesson. <laughs> um, resources are always limited. Resources are time and money. So if we can make the mistakes early on, or at least identify a lot of the mistakes early on or uh, misdirection, uh, it can make everything go a lot smoother as you start and grow the business. What goes into a business plan first is defining the problem that your customers have. Um, the problem can also be a need, so that's an important way of framing it. Uh, what is your solution, uh, which is to say your product or service? Who are your customers? Um, what industry are you in? And tell us a little bit about that industry. Um, who's your competition? This is one of my, my personal um, points that I harp on, who else is out there doing what you do? And that also means how do you stand out from everybody else? Certainly you gotta have some financials together. And you know the execution plan is sort of like, here's the plan for the business, now how do we execute that? So that would include things like marketing, um, financial management, all that kind of good stuff um, that's really about how we go from, an, from a plan to um, an actual business that's growing. Um, for everyone, I encourage you, whether or not you're going to be writing a business plan anytime soon, there's three things. You figure these three things out and you're cooking with fire in terms of having a business. First is customer need. What is the problem that your customer has? Who is your customer? And then what is your unique value proposition to them? Which is to say, why are they going to give you their green money instead of someone else? These things, it's a matrix. You figure out one, it might change the other. Um, so you think you know what your customer's problem is, you think you know who your customer is, and then you realize that the problem does not apply to the people you thought you were gonna be, who were gonna be your customers. Um, or maybe you get those two things ironed out, and then what you realize is your product or service um, maybe needs to change, or you know, all of these things speak to each other. Um, again, I just want to make a couple key points here. Um, what is the pain you're solving with your business? So here's three examples. Um, number one, people want art in their homes. So I'm just using this. I'm using art as an example because your customers do have needs. <laughs> people want art in their home. Okay, that's not telling me a whole lot other than you make art. Um, second up, women in Bucks County want original paintings of flowers in public spaces of their homes and are willing to spend $400 to $1,000. So you're telling me a whole lot there about who your customer is, where your customer is, um, in this case, the exact, um, or some more detail on the product or service that they're looking for and what their budget is. Now, where you really, really want to get to is, is this last um, iteration. People want their homes to feel like they are part of the landscape surrounding their homes. Local artists have studied the landscape and understand its unique beauty. So this is saying, what is the emotional, spiritual motivation for your customer? And once you know that, a lot of these other pieces um, come into place. Competition, who else is doing this um, and how? Regardless if someone's doing exactly what you're doing, your customer has the problem, has a problem, and they're meeting that need in some kind of way. So in the case of the women in Bucks County who want pictures of flowers, they are finding pictures of flowers somewhere or they're using other types of art. So what is your customer doing right now instead of coming to you? I always like to point out that Henry Ford's competition was a horse. So what you're doing may be totally unique, but the problem was that people had to get from point A to point B quickly. So there was a horse, then we had to convince them to buy a car. 
Um, and of course, you must be unique uh, from others. So in terms of understanding your customers, there's a whole lot more that goes into it than just uh, gender and age range. There um, is, you know, what are their interests? What are their values? What are their professional backgrounds? Um, how do they uh, find what they're looking for? Um, how many touch points do you have to have with that person? Or how many touch points does that customer typically have before they make a decision? So um, I share this because I think everyone really needs to open their minds about what a customer is and how you define that customer. So that concludes what I wanna share with you, how and why to business plan in seven minutes or less. Um, here's some of our upcoming um, trainings uh, just in the next, really the next week. Um, and we have lots more on the horizon. So some of this uh, may be too basic for you, Instagram uh, marketing fundamentals, um, but you know, LinkedIn for B2B, we run a webinar once a month um, that we really encourage all early stage businesses to go to, starting a business 101, that's high level, all of the key considerations. The business plan is of course part of it, but there's a lot more to it. Um, and contact us, um, you can go straight to that website. You'll see a link on the, the left side that says request counseling, um, and that will get you into our system. Um, and certainly you're welcome to sign up for the newsletter. Lots of good information um, circulating there on that monthly newsletter. So. With that, I will conclude. Thank you, Erica. That was uh, very interesting and entertaining. Henry Ford's competition was a horse. <laughs> really important to remember. So um, with that, we can answer, I can invite everybody to just unmute themselves if they have a question, uh, since we're a small group here tonight. And while everyone is getting their question together, I will just say that um, I hope to see everybody next week. Officially, Craft Month in Philadelphia will begin November uh, 1st. And we have the Philadelphia Museum of Art Contemporary Craft Show opening with a preview reception the evening of November 4th. We have our symposium on Friday, November 5th, and a free family-friendly event, Craft Now Create on November 6th on Saturday at Smith Memorial Playground. And like um, Katie mentioned, there is a new opportunity. I put some links in the chat with um, the PA Council on the Arts. They are giving 500 to $2,000 uh, creative accelerator uh, grants away. And we're gonna have the Greater Philadelphia Cultural Alliance talk about um, getting a referral through, uh, is Temple doing, is Temple a referral partner too? Temple, the Enterprise Center, are gonna talk about the referral process and we're gonna have them at our next Capital Now session on December 7th. And just a point of clarification about us as a referral partner, you actually have to go through the whole application process, your eligibility is confirmed, and then you come to Temple SBDC or a number of other institutions um, for uh, a further discussion about your, your business and, and planning for it. So if you contact me, I can't help you with that. <laughs> Perfect. Well, with that, I will thank everyone for coming, let you get to your um, evening and your dinner. And um, thank you so much, Nathan, Katie, Erica, um, Joanna, uh, Community First Fund, Temple, Creative Business Accelerator, all the SBDCs and the CDFIs and the CBAs. <laughs> Have a great evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.